Red Sharks NAB coverage is brought to you by NewTek, G Technology, Blackmagic Design, and Adobe. Hello, everyone, particularly everybody at the Sony stand. If you turn around and look this way, you're going to hear the most inter interesting discussion of the afternoon. And the title is I think we've all agreed it's getting the best from your kit. And we'll be looking at exactly what that means over the next uh, few minutes. I'm not sure how long we've got, but we'll keep talking until we stop. So um, I just want a quick introduction before we introduce ourselves. I just want to say that um, we're, we're living in a world where um, it's all getting very abstract. If you walk around the Sony booth, for example, almost everywhere people are talking about AI, they're talking about video over IP, they're talking about stuff which doesn't seem to have much to do with actual kit. Um, and I'm just saying this to make the point that we actually um, wherever we get to in this sort of hierarchy or, or, or to put it philosophically, this ontology of uh, equipment and, and technologies, then um, uh, we're always going to have a piece of kit. You know, there is no such thing as a software lens. And as long as you have lenses, you're going to need cameras to attach them to and turn that into some sort of signal. So wherever we get in this hierarchy of technology, and it's all moving very, very quickly, wherever we get to, we're always going to have some physical kit. And the reason, the point of this discussion is for us to look at how we can get the maximum value from that. We're going to look at different models of ownership. Um, you, we all know that the more, you know, the more sophisticated, the better quality, the more robust equipment gets, the more it tends to cost. That's an easy relationship. But less easy is the relationship between uh, spending money on your own kit and renting it or maybe actually owning your own kit and renting that out. So we're going to look at different models, the pluses and minuses, and you'll understand that we do have some authority in this when I introduce the, the panel to you. So let's just kick off. Uh, first of all, Buzz, if you could just introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, uh, hi I'm Buzz. I'm uh, an owner of a small film production company in Amsterdam, based in the Netherlands, and we mostly film documentaries and we own a uh, red helium for whatever that would be, be worth or not. Um, I'm Christina Budelis. I have a background in short documentaries and branded content as well. Um, and I'm co-founder and president of KitSplit. KitSplit is a rental marketplace for cameras and related gear. Uh, we've been called the Airbnb of cameras because you can rent to or from other people and companies and rental houses. And we have about 50,000 members renting to and from one another. Hello, uh, I'm Lizbeth Kaufman. I'm also a co-founder of KitSplit. Um, Christina just did a great job describing what KitSplit is. But, uh, but yeah, Forbes and Fast Company have called us the Airbnb of cameras and the dominant player in the online camera rental marketplace. So when you're out there buying gear today, you can list it on KitSplit and earn back um, your investment. Um, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, I'm Bianca Halpern. I'm a cinematographer. And I own a rental house in Cover City uh, called Bicini. We're woman-owned and operated. And we offer childcare during the preps. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Now let's start, uh, let's start at some sort of beginning, which is let's imagine that we're going to work on, on a production. Let's, c let's call it a documentary. Let's say we're going to work on a documentary, which is, you know, not, not low end, but not particularly high end, just a mainstream documentary that may be picked up by, you know, Netflix at some point. Where, where, where do you start? Where do you start when you're planning this? You might have the idea, you might have the storyline, you might have the theme in your mind. I would hope that you would. But where do we start planning for this? Okay. Um, I, you mean on a gear level, I guess? I, I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's, let's assume that everything else is taken care of. But at the point where you start having to somehow acquire, acquire gear for the production, and that's assuming that we, I don't have any gear. Yeah, I do assume that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so I would say that um, you kind of want to shoot in the highest quality possible without being it too impractical for the story. 
So if we're not shooting a high-end documentary, uh, we probably won't have all the crew in the world. So it probably needs to be compact. We might want to travel. Uh, so therefore, our camera kit can't be um, to you know we can't we can't really build out a complete set and have like. Okay, so you're making the important point that there's there's a difference between what you'd like to have and what it is sensible to have. Yeah, and then I still want to shoot in the highest quality, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. quality possible. So that's always going to be difficult because you're, that, that, there's a tension there. Um, and then you have budget. So, you know, uh, how much are you going to actually spend on gear? So my first idea then would be to basically go to my rental company first, try out some different lenses, cameras, find the right solution for that shoot. And now I'm more into directing than I'm actually doing like the cinematography. So I would say that I, I would, well, first find the cinematographer and then, uh, you know, get him or her to, um, to choose the kit that uh, he or she likes. So, so you're, you're already starting to suggest there are different roles. There's like a, a producer, a cinematographer, a director, obviously. So let's, let's, let's see, see what, what, uh, what, what we think, you know, from your point of view. If, 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 if you were starting on this, this kind of notional production, what would be the first steps that, that you would take? For Christina? me, I think the first step is always really establishing the look and feel of the piece yeah. um, and making sure that the cinematographer, the director, the producer are on the same page about that. And I think, you know, people have different ways of describing that. And so um, sometimes it can be helpful to make a mood board or to talk about like images or other films or music yeah. that inspire you. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there because this process of discussing what you need, it's obviously best to do that before you're on the phone to the rental company. Totally. Yeah. I think that obviously like there's so many technical decisions to be made, but to me it's like kind of stepping back and really getting on the same page about that can help inform all the technical decisions and make sure that everyone's aligned. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, what, what do you think, uh, what role should a rental company play in giving advice about this? Because obviously there's a fine line, isn't there? It's not really your job to set up a production, but what, what kind of help can a, uh, a rental company give? Yeah, it's a great question. And we kind of come in right after the step that you guys just described, where you've already got the look and the feel, and you know, you know, you have a sense of what you want. Um, and you know, we've built a team of rental agents who are themselves filmmakers. Um, so you can come to them and you can say, this is what I'm looking for, this is the gear I'm thinking about, and then they can help advise on like what exactly could work for your budget. Um, so like, and I'm sure, Bianca has lots of thoughts on this as well. Um, like you guys, you know, the filmmaker ultimately has the vision and knows what they need. And we're here, Kit Split, the rental agents on our team are here to help figure out, you know, what's the best tools for your vision and where's the best place to get them. And what, you know, are there, are there things you can substitute to meet your budget um, or things you don't need or you do need? We can kind of think two steps ahead and make sure that your production has everything it needs um, and make it very easy. Okay, so, so just m m moving on, um, you, you, you know, we, we, we've got to the stage now where we're going to, you know, we, we, we want to rent some equipment. And, and, and I, I think you've, you've just suge suggested that it's really important um, that there's, there's, it's, renting is about more than simple specifications, isn't it? There, there's a layer in there where, where there, there is advice to be given and there is a service to be given. So, so, I mean, how, how would you define that service for a, a, a rental company? What, what kind of service should a rental company be given? As a rental house, uh, I think we're responsible for giving the best advice to the client, but it's also important that the, they can meet the budget, right? So it does start with the budget as well i think especially in the documentary world because normally it's a pretty long duration of the shoot yes. in documentaries and then a very important factor i think for documentaries is also sound because most likely you would need a camera that needs yeah. to record good quality sound often overlooked I don't yeah. think all documentaries actually have a sound person, so a lot of times you need 
you know, right now we do have a documentary that we're supp supplying gear that they are shooting on the mini, but I think that's not very common mm. because they have a professional sound guy who is recording the sound, but I feel like normally they use slightly lower end cameras, yeah. but uh, I think now there are many good options for higher end lenses. So you could mix, you know, a lower end camera with a higher end lens in order to give the best look for your documentary. So I think number one is budget. In the end it is because, but also what they're looking for, right? And also a documentary normally, a camera that it's already set to go. Like, I don't know if we're allowed to say brands or not, but. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with Ari, the Alexa Mini is a box, so you need a lot of accessories. Yeah. But you have the Amira, who is already a camera that it's ready to put on the shoulder. So yes. I would most likely recommend an Amira before an Alexa Mini for yeah. a documentary. And uh, I mean, here's something that, I mean, as, as an editor of a well-known publication, yeah. um, I, I, I keep coming across because I often, I like talking to people who run rental companies because they see a side of the products that you don't see when you talk to a manufacturer. It's not because the manufacturer is trying to hide anything, it's because the, the manufacturer doesn't have the experience of hiring cameras out, mm -hmm. having them come back and getting feedback on how they performed yeah. in, in great detail, you know, in every kind of process. So this is immense cumulative value that, that, that Rental houses, rental houses have. I, I just want to move on now to the the idea of ownership versus rental. And I know, Buzz, this is something that you 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 lie awake at night worrying about. You've 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 lost 150 pounds <laughs> worrying about. You should have seen me before. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think um, for me personally, uh, but this is a case by case scenario, so I can only talk like for my specific needs. Um, I bought my camera and I did that for the very specific reason that I kind of want to shoot all my productions at a certain level. Uh, and I would consider that a high-end level because I, well, I shoot at on AK. Um, and the issue we're having, and this this is just being honest, I'm, I'm basically, I've invested my money in this. And I know that when I'm starting on a new documentary, uh, that's not like for a client, like, but I still have to pitch it. But we want to shoot because we're really passionate about the story. I can basically grab my camera and go. And I don't have the cost of rental beforehand, which is like, it can be an investment. So, so it's a, r a really great way of, uh, you know, if you have the tool already in, you know, in, in house, it, it makes it a little bit cheaper to start off with. The, 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 count, the counter argument though, is that I love my rental agency, right? So they deliver a service that's so good. They'll, they'll drive up to wherever I am to make sure that it, like if I even miss a cable or something, they'll supply it. But there's nothing contradictory about that position because it's, it seems to me intuitive that you might want to own the core of your productions. And then, you know, however minimal that might be, and then bring in the uh, peripheral stuff uh, as and when you need it. Because you don't need to own stuff for every eventuality. Exactly, yeah. I believe that, yeah. Yeah, we see that a lot. You know, on Kit Split, we've got 50,000 filmmakers and production companies and, and hundreds of rental houses. Yeah. And we don't see it as an either own or rent. We see people who both own a, a, you know, a beautiful camera, like a red helium or whatever, and they need to rent. Um, or they'll own like a set of lenses and then they'll want to like switch it out with different cameras depending on the production. Um, and so we feel like a kind of a neutral party in that. There are really great reasons to own gear. Um, it's you brought up a really you know an excellent one where it's just so easy when you own it, you can get out there and shoot. Um, and if you make that investment, you can also monetize that investment. You can list it on KitSplit and rent it out to other filmmakers and earn back significant income to pay back that investment and beyond. Um, 
but not everyone's in a position to do that. And if you're not, then you can rent and that gives you more flexibility. Um, so both, both are good options in our perspective. And from a lens perspective, I, a lot of people ask, uh, do like the classic thing where they go like, well, you should invest in lenses because they keep their value. I, I agree with that, right? That's, 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 a, that's a valid point, but... but yeah, then you, you don't have the... the then you always you will have the same look. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, it was a, uh, the choice was like, I kind of want to, ha to own my camera, yeah, but I hard. want to rent, rent my lenses because then I'm, I'm more free in my creative choices. For me, like the lens choice is a more creative choice than the it camera is, choice. For sure. Yeah, that's really smart of you as a production company owner to own a camera and then rent which lens you need for a specific job because if not i feel like you get tired of it i've met people that bought their cameras and lenses and they love it the first year and then after they're like you know they just and then they got them, their clients used to not having to rent outside lenses and then how to break it in into that that's it gets harder okay so i think we've established the case for this kind of hybrid model where people own and they rent. They almost own to rent. And, and uh, that, that seems perfectly valid to me. But let's talk about the practicalities now, because, um, you know, I, I, uh, you know I, in an analogous world, I mean, I'm, I'm a musician and I buy kind of synthesizers and stuff like that. And they're, they're very, very personal to me. And I have them all configured the way I want to. And I'd love to get back some of the money that's depreciating in them by renting them out. But I don't like the idea that somebody's going to kind of config, reconfigure everything and, you know, just because the next time I need to use it, the time I could have been using it creatively, I'm going to have to be resetting all those dials. How, how do we deal with that? How does that work out in practice with, with this rental model? Yeah, I, well, do you want to... Um. Well, so we, you know, for KidSplit, trust has been really important for us since the very beginning. Um, we, you know, we're started and run by filmmakers for whom their camera gear is often like their most expensive and valued possession. Um, so we put a real premium on like reviews and ratings and helping our users know to like leave it how they found it and, and okay. to be very careful. Um, and over 95% of our reviews on the platform are five stars. Um, and so people do a really great job of taking care of the gear on both ends. And I think part of that is, you know, it's all kind of filmmakers and rental houses and production companies on the platform who really care about this gear um, and care about their reputation with one another. Yeah, I, I totally get that because, you, you know, a long time ago when I was trying to insure some of my musical equipment with my, my household insurer, they said, oh, you're a musician. Well, we don't insure musicians because, well, you can imagine what kind of reputation they, they, they had in mind. But then I found a specialist insurer and they said, well, and, and, and they insured my whole house and my gigging kit for less the, than the, the kind of general purpose insurance. And I said, well, how on earth can you do that? You know, because I've heard that musicians are a terrible risk. And they said, actually, the reverse is true. Musicians are thoughtful, careful people. They love their gear. They respect it. They, they take care of it. They're horrified if it gets scratched. You know, and I think that obviously applies here. And the fact that you have this crowdsourced uh, feedback, um, it's as rock solid um, an indication as you can get as, as to what is going to be the fate of the equipment that you, you rent out. So, I mean, how does that work out in practice? Is that, is that a reliable indicator? Yeah, actually the scenario you described of like setting up your camera with exactly, you know, the, s the settings that you like, that can actually be a benefit when it comes to renting because the renter comes in and they're renting from an expert gear owner who knows this camera yeah. through and through and can, w and can show the renter like these are the settings that I, I think are best. And so it's a really awesome like learning opportunity. It's a good actually. starting place, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see how that, that, that would really work. So, so what are the trends? What are the trends in, in this field? You know, what, what, what are the things that are changing over time? What can we, where, where will you be in five years time? 
I think anamorphic is very trendy right now. Full frame is very trendy for the manufacturers. Not the people are still trying to figure out like what to do with that. I think it's great, but it's just a matter of are people going to have the extra cash for it? Uh, this is the perfect case for rental, yeah. isn't it? When there's essentially a new format, you you don't want to. You know, it's expensive to get into full frame. You, you don't want to commit yeah. yourself. Yeah. It's the perfect opportunity to try it out with almost no downside. Yeah, so full frame, I mean, I think it's still pretty new. And this year, a lot of manufacturers have new lenses for it. And so I think for clients is a good opportunity to test them out. But I don't think it's for everyone. Uh, especially like you need a bigger monitor because it's yeah. super shallow. It's not like for a documentary probably would be beautiful, but well, I don't know. Well, well like everything, there's a, there's a case for using it sometimes and a case yeah. for not, not using it other times. Yeah. Yeah. But but through through the facility of rental, uh, it's there if you if you want if you want to try it. Yeah. I mean, how many how many of your customers do try before they buy? Tons. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are using kit split to go find, you know, like maybe they want to buy a Sigma lens and they want to try it out and they want to find something like a rental house or an owner operator in their neighborhood and they can go and try it out and then they're like fall in love with it and then they go buy it. Um, yeah. Buzz, you were saying that you love your local rental house. What is it that you love? I, I think it's just a matter of service, probably. Yeah. So um, a good rental house. Or for that matter, uh, a good rental person like on Ketsplit is someone who really takes care of you as a renter. And for a lot of professional productions, you just need to be like if you're on a shoot, n basically nothing can go wrong. Well, ever. The, on every shoot, there will go something wrong. Ideally. But more like um, uh, so. So you need to have this kind of friendship with, I think, a rental company or or someone that will lend you the kit so that you'll just feel completely secure when you're filming. I think that's the most important thing. Like if there's something wrong, can I call that person? Does he know what I'm talking about? Will he, will he or she care about me? Right. So, so you, you mentioned the idea of trust, which obviously is important in, in so many senses. How, how, does, how does that concept, how is that concept handled by the, the kit split model? How does yeah. trust build up through the kit split model? Yeah, we're, as Christina mentioned, we're very focused on trust. Um, so we, you know, and we have this large community, 50,000 filmmakers and production companies and rental houses, and we vet every member who joins kit split before they're allowed to rent gear or list gear. Um, so we do a very thorough vetting process to make sure that they are trustworthy and professional. Um, and then Christina mentioned we have this ratings and reviews system so that you can essentially like build up your gear and professional reputation with KitSplit. Um, so when you treat the gear well, you get credit for that. Um, and then another thing is that we work with rental houses like B-Cine, um, who offer that amazing level of service and knowledge and backup gear and checkout space. Um, and that's really crucial to being, being able to provide, you know, that higher level of service. Um, I, I feel like I should let you talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I love the idea of kids split, but I can only imagine what happens like a rent. When you own a camera, most likely you don't own two cameras, right? So how do people do that in a case of we're in the middle of the set and something happened? I have gotten a call because someone rented through an online service and then the renter didn't have. I don't know what happens in the back end, if the money is returned or not. But for us as a rental house, we have to come and give them a new camera if the camera breaks. So that's why maybe renting to a rental house, it's slightly more expensive than renting from an online service because you are expected to change the gear if something breaks. You have to, you have yeah. to do that. And, and I can see why there's, there's a, a, a certainly a case for um, online rental and, and traditional rental. They're not contradictory. Yeah. One is if you like a backup or a you know, 
a, an extra kind of service and there's a kind yeah, of I think it's complementary and depending on the yeah. level that you are you know but it's really important to have a relationship with rental houses especially when you're starting out because you can learn a lot yeah. or from a good renter that can help you te that can teach you you know we as at Bicini we just don't say oh here's your camera we're, we make sure that people know how to use it and the wireless focus system, sometimes they're used to one brand and we have the other brand. So we're very hands-on during the prep, which I think depending on the owner operator, they're more and they're not. But I think the clients, they choose the renter that works for them, right? No. So if you need extra help, you're going to find someone that can help you. Exactly. Now, one difference I can see between traditional rental and online rental is that the traditional rental houses have to make the decision about which equipment to buy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now obviously you'll be guided by demand, but in the case of online it's a pure it's a purer market, isn't it? Because people will place their equipment for hire um, and, and and by definition it's going to reflect the trends because people will uh, although I guess it may lag because slightly because if people have got equipment that they're not using as much, they might place it for hire. But but mostly it's going to automatically follow the trends. Is that what you find? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And we've actually occasionally seen like the individuals be ahead of the trends. Like I think a few years ago when VR started getting really popular, yeah. it was also when KidSplit was getting off the ground. Um, and we had a lot of individual owners buy VR gear immediately and list it for rent. Um, and some of the rental houses maybe like did, weren't as quick to buy them. Um, so I think that's an interesting area where occasionally you can be ahead of the curve because an individual who's like deeply interested in VR or whatever the new kind of exciting technology is might take that leap more quickly than a larger company. And, and presumably looking at this from a slightly wider angle, people will buy stuff for a particular well-paying project, but when that project's over, it's like, oh, I'm actually never going to use this again. Right. Let's, let's put it out there on the market and, and, and try to get our money back from that. Definitely. Yeah. So, well, I. I've, I've learned a lot from this um, it, because I think if you're not in, in the rental market, you don't think about it very much. But actually, I can see all kinds of layers and, and levels of sophistication. And I think it's obviously, it's going to grow because, the, the, you know, just like Airbnb, it's, it's, it's a concept that works. And where, where do you see, see it going in the next few years? I mean, you could do, just do the same thing and it would have its own life. But wh where would you like to be with it in a few years' time? I don't want you to give away your confidential business plans, but just as a broad, broad selection of um, you know views, what what do you, what do you think is going yeah, to happen? Yeah, I mean, with KidSplit, our goal is to make life easier for filmmakers and content creators. So we want to make it really easy for content creators to find exactly the gear and the insurance and the services that they need, and then direct them to find it, you know, right in their neighborhood nearby from amazing vendors like Bicine. Um, so our goal is to just use technology, use the internet, use like our, our database um, and our location mapping to make everything very easy and uh, transparent. Um, so that's our, our focus. Um, and the, the bigger we build kit split, the more value we can bring to filmmakers and to uh, rental houses like Bicine and just make, uh, break down the barriers, make the transactions easier and get more films made. I, w I would say that what I find interesting as well, yeah, especially with the likes of KidSplit, is the fact that if I would, for some reason, I would be in need of a cinematographer in New York, then I, would c I, then I could actually use the platform not to just rent the kit, but to basically you know, hire the person. And I think that's a really interesting new kind of social way uh, of connecting. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we really see Kit Split as a community. Um, some of the most interesting and exciting stories um, beyond, you know, saving money, making money around gear are about people meeting through the platform. Um, we've heard so many stories of, you know, someone rents from another person or a company nearby and then ends up becoming friends or hiring each other on gigs. Um, there haven't been any Kid Split marriages yet, but I feel like it's just a matter of time. Um, and, you know, we do a lot to kind of uh, build on that, whether it's events, uh, workshops, that sort of thing. We're all about bringing the community together. All right, that, that, that sounds like an ideal combination. Uh, and um, so um, I, I think we're just about out of time. If people want to get in touch with Kid Split, where do, where do they go? So our website is kitsplit, K-I-T-S-P-L-I-T dot com. Um, and you can see all of our contact information there, rent gear. We also have some great swag uh, bags and fanny packs out if anyone wants that. All right. Well, that, thank. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And B Cine is also an amazing rental house in L.A. Yes. So if you guys are anyone doing productions in L.A., check them out. Um, and they have child care. So when you're do when you're coming in and doing your checkout, you can bring your kids. It's amazing. Like no, that, that talk about building relationships. No, that's service. That's, that's service. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody, and thanks to Sigma for letting us uh, use this this Thank beautiful you. set. Thanks a lot.